Good morning. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew Hockrottle, and I will be your host for your Illustrator Typography Challenge. That's right. We are celebrating 36 days of type, and today we're hopping in with the letter N. We're going to be distorting type, making it super crazy and wonky. So let's hop into Adobe Illustrator. All right, so if you haven't downloaded our source file, which I didn't mention, so I'm not going to fault you for not having it, uh, you can grab that down in the description. So right below us, down in the description, uh, you can grab this source file and work along with us as we create here in Adobe Illustrator. All right, so the challenge for today, let's break some typography rules by using envelope distorts and grunge effects to create unique distorted type, right? So it's gonna be a great time. We're gonna mess things up and let's just start right in by uh, playing around with this N that is right here, right? Everything is grouped together so we can right click and ungroup very easily. But we're going to click on this N and you can see that it is live type. And the way to notice that it's live type is by looking at this line down here, right? Another way that we can see is if we use the type tool, we can click and drag and hover over and we'll see if it highlights, it is live type. Now what we're gonna do right off the bat is we are going to make a copy of this and just put it off to the side. So control C, control V, um, I'm putting it off to the side. I also have the hiccups, so if there are weird sounds, the hiccups are happening during, <laughs> during this show. All right, so we're gonna click on this one. We're gonna change it to outlines. We need it to be a shape if we're gonna mess it up and make it crazy. So we're going to go to object. We're going to go to expand and then hit okay. You also can hit control, shift, and O. Now, there's something that you need to know. About today, there is no right way. In design general, there's no right way to do things. Today is all about experimenting, trying things, combining things, making it crazy and wrong, trying to like break the rules. So there's no wrong way to do this. Just go ahead and follow along. I'll teach you some concepts and some tools, and hopefully you can kind of create something that is unique to you. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to grab this, right? We have the shape, right? You can see that it's outlines. There's no line at the bottom. We just have the little points. And we are going to copy, Control-C, and paste, Control-V, right over there. We'll move it over to the side there. And now the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use envelope distorts. So envelope distorts are really crazy and they are just like, they're just what you would think of of an envelope, right? We're gonna kind of mesh all of these pieces into an envelope. Now, what Illustrator needs to know is what are we putting in the envelope? We're putting this letter N, and what is the envelope shaped like? And right here it is the circle. So check this out. What we can do is we're gonna make sure these shapes are on top, right? It's very important to have the envelope that you're putting something in as the topmost layer. So we're gonna click and drag over all of these. We're going to right click and then go to arrange and bring to front. So we want those to be in the front, right? So from there, I'm going to select the N and I'm going to select this circle and then I'm going to go to object, uh, envelope distort and make with top object. What that's gonna do is it's going to Again, make an envelope distort. It's gonna distort like an envelope. Take the top object and put the bottom object inside it. We're a hot mess today, y'all. Just coughing up a storm. All right. So we're gonna click on make with top object and boom, check that out. It has morphed that letter into the shape that we have designated, right? So I'm just gonna click and drag a couple copies of this by just clicking and dragging and holding Alt or Option. And again, we can do it again. We can grab these two and go to object, envelope distort, make with top object. It's just a square. So it's gonna look pretty, pretty, pretty much the same. Now, this is where it gets crazy. This object here is gonna look wild. So select these two and we're going to go to object, envelope distort, and make with top object. Yeah, super wonky. So when you get complex shapes, um, you can use the pen tool to just create any shape and then you can smash type into that shape, right? Magic. 
So the coolest thing to do with this is let's say that we're going to make a copy of this shape right here, right? And I'm just making that clicking and dragging, holding Alt or Option. And then we scaled it using the scale tool, which is S, or you can just grab these little nodes on the side. So from here, we're going to do 36, right? So we're gonna say 36 because we're working with 36 days of type. And I'm going to select both of these objects again and go to Object, Envelope Distort, and Make with Top Object. There we go. So we've got 36 in there looking nice and crazy and wonky. And then next I want to do days, but I want days to kind of fit around it. So let's grab the pen tool right here and we're just gonna click and we're gonna make a random shape for us to put days into. Let's see if we can get it to kind of follow the shape a little bit. There we go, this might end up looking pretty crazy, but there are a couple ways that we can fix that. So I'm just gonna click and type out days. There we go, let's scale that up a little bit. And I wanna grab the formatting from this type that I had here, so I'm just gonna use the eyedropper tool to eye drop onto that. Mm, why are you not doing that? All right, that's fine. Mm, are we using Adele? What are we using here? Uh, let's see, what's our type? Adriana Condensed. All right, let's make sure that we have the same font. All right, Adriana Condensed. We can change the font up here. Condensed, extra bold, it looks good. All right, so we're gonna make this all caps. I'm gonna type this out, days. And from there, you're gonna learn a new hotkey, and it is, hold on, let me confirm, it is Control Shift Option C. <laughs> let, me, let me confirm that. So first we wanna make sure that our shape is in the front. We're gonna grab days and we're gonna hit Control Shift Alt C. Oh, that's not B? Nope. There it is, Control Alt C. So it's uh, Option and Control, I believe, on Mac. But Control Alt C is going to make that for you. Um, and we do have a live chat here. Uh, this is a live stream if you're watching after the fact. We have live streams every day, behance.net slash Adobe Live. And I wanna take some questions from our live stream. So if you have a question, you can drop it in the comments down below um, if you're watching this on YouTube. Later, if you're in the live chat, Always drop your questions in there. And if you miss a live chat, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time every single day. Uh, so let's see here. If you adjust the kerning, could you get rid of the tail of the six? Maybe, there's a couple different ways. So we're gonna zoom in and look at A. And that was a question from our live chat there. So this looks pretty crazy and it's not quite working uh, how I want it to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the direct selection tool and I can actually select this shape. now. Up here you can see we have the mesh and then we have the contents. So the contents is the type and the envelope, right, is the outside. So I can grab the direct selection tool and just click on some of these points and it's gonna allow me to kind of move these around so that they don't look as crazy. Um, I think there's a problem maybe with having too many points here. Let's see, that A is looking wild. Maybe I wanna remove a point here. I can just use the uh, pen tool to remove this point. All right, so we're getting somewhere. Let's maybe bring this over here. And again, you're just using the direct selection tool to grab these nodes and kind of play around with how you want them to go. So we can really, there we go, that looks cool. Drag this up here, this up here, and maybe this goes all the way over there. So there we go, we've got some crazy type going, um, and there is a way to change this. So because this is live type, we can simply click on edit contents, and maybe we want to say 36 nights of type, right? I can type it in and it is going to augment that into the same shape for me, really cool. So it does keep that live and it will change into a shape if you change that type, right? So it looks pretty good. I'm going to keep it at days and then we're gonna do of. So let's just do a nice little kind of bop right here. I'm going to grab this type and paste, oops. Oh boy. There we go, grab this type, paste in the word of, oops, of. And again, we are going to grab both of those, Control, Alt, C. 
And this is where you will see the error. This requires a selection of multiple objects. The top object must be single path or mesh. That's because right now this is the top object. So we can right click and then we can arrange and bring to front. So there we go, Control Shift C is going to place it right in there. And then let's do type all the way across the bottom here. And the less points that you have, probably the better um, when you're working with something like this. We're just gonna create a nice little kind of shape there. And then of course, we are going to paste our type and just type out type, oh boy. Bring that to front and then grab these two and go to object, again, envelope distort and make with top object. There we go, that looks cool. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so we've got some cool type looking good here. Now let's destroy it. Let's, let's make it so much worse. The, first, I'm gonna make a copy, Control C and Control V, and then we're going to use the scale tool to scale it down. Now, it looks like all the type is where I want it to be and everything looks good. And it is still live type, you can see with these underlines. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to Object and Expand Appearance. Select that one more time, Expand and hit OK. And now you can see that these are all shapes. So it'll be much easier to work with. We can augment a little bit if we need to, but they're all shapes now and not live type. Uh, we had someone in our live chat asking, can you make them outlines? Yes, um, and it's very, very easy. And now we have these awesome, really cool, wonky pieces uh, to work with of type. So I'm gonna delete these, bye. All right, we're gonna delete those and we are just going to put this in the center here. I'm gonna scale that up using the scale tool. And now let's, uh, let's make it more crazy. Let's make it more crazy, how about that? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this and we're just going to start layering effects. So effects are really, really a powerful tool to use here in Illustrator and they can really make things uh, pop off the page. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I wanna make kind of a melty version of this because it looks like it's melting. And so we're gonna combine a bunch of effects and kind of layer things and use the power of Illustrator to create some really cool dynamic type. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a copy. And what you can do is you can go to edit, copy, and then edit and paste in place. This is very important. So paste in place is going to paste a copy exactly where the other one was. So you can see if I change the color, there are now two of them, but we have a copy, right? So we want a copy on top. All right, so we're going to hit effect, and here's where we, here's where we go our separate ways. Here's where we, I'll, I'll cut into this camera. Literally pick any option. Pick any option in this, and in, in literally click on effects, and pick anything because effects will change the type and I want you to experiment, I want you to try new stuff, I want you to figure out type. So we're gonna do some melting effects. If you wanna do that, great. If not, absolutely pick any other effect. Uh, and when you're done with it, make sure you join our Discord over there, bit.ly slash AI Discord, and you can post it in our challenge channel and also use the hashtag 36 days of type when you post on social media. All right, let's ruin it. So we're going to go down here and I'm going to go to stylize. Uh, let's go to sketch. And then I'm gonna go down here to maybe Chrome. So we're gonna click on Chrome and watch what happens. It's gonna bring up, and these are raster effects. So the difference between vector and raster is vector is all of those anchor points and raster is going to be pixels. Now we'll be converting it to vector, so don't really worry about that. But right now with this Chrome, you can see that it's got all this glowiness, this is great. So you can use these sliders to adjust the amount of detail, and I probably want less detail on here. And then the smoothness, we can adjust so that there aren't as many kind of levels and layers. So we'll hit okay here. And now we've got some cool kind of wibbly wobbliness. Now the great thing about this is we could just use this to add on top of our existing type. So we're gonna use the appearance panel over here. And in the transparency, we can click and change the blend mode to multiply and watch what happens. 
It is now multiplied on our type and we have this awesome type that looks like it's melting and glowing. You could also play around with different blending modes on here. If we wanted to change hard light, that would look pretty cool. Uh, soft light's probably gonna look pretty cool too. So you can play around with all of those different pieces. Now, what I like to do is I will set this to black. So we're setting this to black and now we've got some really cool type that looks wild. And we're going to go to object and rasterize. And the reason we're doing this is rasterizing is going to keep it so that it is an image and we can use it to vectorize, right? Really powerful tool here in Illustrator. So we're gonna zoom in. You can see that it's all pixels now and it has one big bounding box, which means that it is just an image. What we can do is we are going to click right here and we are going to click on default. Actually, let's do black and white logo. So we're gonna click on black and white logo and with this image selected, it will bring up the image trace or vectorize. So we are going to go to black and white logo, click right there. And if we zoom out, you can see it picked up some of those pieces, but not quite all of them. So we're gonna click on the image trace panel up here. And from here, we are going to click on advanced. Yes, we're getting advanced today. Uh, and we are going to ignore white because we don't want white in there. It's totally fine, right? You can already see it's taking the white out. And then we can increase the number of paths. So this is just how much detail do you want? Uh, noise, we're gonna take this down. So the noise is how many like little individual pieces that we want. Corners is how rounded everything is. Uh, let's pick up a lot of paths. And then the threshold is how dark or light it can get. So if I wanna bring this down, you'll see it's gonna get a lot darker. If I bring it up, it's gonna get a lot lighter. It actually went away there. Um, so that actually looks pretty cool. So from here, I'm going to click on expand. And now I have all of that effect as a vector, right? I can come in here, I can change individual pieces and individual colors, um, right? Looking pretty good. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to change the orange to this nice dark orange. Ooh, that's looking cool. We're looking good. All right, let's keep layering some stuff. So we're gonna grab our background type. And the cool thing is we can literally move this around. Uh, it is completely independent. If we wanted to, we could offset it a little bit and then maybe change the blending mode over here to something like multiply. And there we go. You can see how it's interacting with those shapes. And maybe we do, ooh, let's do like a red and blue. I'm getting, I'm getting so excited. Uh, again, you can do whatever you want with these, but I love playing around with some of these crazy effects. So let's get a nice bright red in there. Ooh, cool. All right, it's looking crazy. It's looking crazy, it's looking cool. All right, so we've got some 36 days of type going, but the type in the background looks a little bit too clean for me, right? I wanna do something a little bit crazy. So we're going to build some more effects on there. That's right, always effects. So all we need to do is again, copy, edit, copy. We are going to paste in place, edit, paste in place. And you can see that it went to the top there, perfect. So I'm going to change this to red. And then we're going to go to effects one more time. We are going to go to maybe stylize and do round corners. Let's see what happens here. So round corners is just gonna round those corners out. So maybe we set this to 30. Said okay. Let's see what that did. All right, that did some stuff. Sure, that did some stuff, why not? Um, next, we are going to go to effect and layer something else on top of there. Uh, let's do uh, pixelate and we're going to do a color halftone. We're gonna hit okay on whatever the default settings are. That's probably fine. So the halftone's looking pretty good, right? And then we can go and let's do another one. Let's go to sketch and let's do, um, let's do plastic wrap. Where's plastic wrap? I believe that it's in artistic uh, plastic wrap right here. So plastic wrap is going to make it look like the type is wrapped in plastic. You can see all these little pieces. Um, and it, right now, I think that it's wrapping from the center. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna make this a compound path by going to object, compound path, and make. There we go, that did it. So uh, let me put those effects back on, there we go. And now let's go in here and let's change artistic and go to plastic wrap. Now each individual letter, oh, it's not wrapping each individual letter, why not? All right, then we're not gonna use it. We're going to use, uh, let's use a brush stroke, maybe stylize, maybe some texture. 
Uh, some sketch. Let's do a graphic pen, see what that looks like. Ooh, cool. So again, you can play around with all of these different, uh, all the different pieces. Let's hit okay there. Yeah, it looks good. And so now we can use our, uh, our uh, vectorize again by just going to object, rasterize, hit okay. And then we can use that black and white logo. Ooh, some extra texture. So I want that to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna bring that threshold up and I want it to find more of those paths and more detail. So the lower the noise goes, the more detail you're gonna pick up. So that looks pretty good. So we're gonna expand it. That's gonna give us a ton of anchor points. Um, and we did forget to ignore white. Now, if you forget to ignore white, all you need to do is double click in. We're gonna grab the magic wand tool right here, click on a white area and hit delete, boom. So now we have this awesome kind of texture going in and I'm actually gonna make the texture white to see what happens, watch this. Cool, so it looks good but it's sitting on top of everything. Let's bring the red to the front. So click on the red, right click, arrange, bring to front. Yeah, that's looking cool, that's looking groovy. So there are three levels here, right? The back one is just our type that we've used envelope distorts on. The middle one has that nice half tone that we've auto traced, uh, that we've vectorized. And then the top one has that chrome. So it looks really cool. So we can play around maybe with working with some different colors. Um, maybe I wanna do this kind of lime green with like a purple. Let's try it purple there. Ooh, that looks pretty good too. So you can play around and make any kind of distorted crazy type by just combining those. Um, and if you want to, I'm gonna show you something you can take for free, hold on. What I want you to do is I'm going to grab my settings and I'll give this to you because you can use it. Uh, and these are the settings that I use for a very specific auto trace. Now it's gonna grab a ton of detail, uh, but it's very specific. So I'll put it right here in the center of the screen so you can see. So my threshold is at 128. I keep that in the center so that I can use it to grab different pieces. The paths are at 98, so very high on the paths. Corners, zero, right? I want sharp corners. And then noise, I keep it two. So that's gonna grab lots of tiny little details and we are going to ignore white. So those are the settings that I use in like my actual personal work um, to grab the different pieces and to create effects. So let's do one more on top just because we have time. And I am going to go to effect. We're going to toss on maybe a pixelate. Let's do uh, some crystallize. So crystallize is a great way to get wonky edges. So crystallize, if we change it, is just going to give us little pieces. Uh, and let's zoom out here so we can see. Crystallize gives us little pieces and will make it very angular. So we're gonna hit okay on that. And you'll see, why did it not render that correctly? Let me try it one more time. Crystallize. Oh, it's not wanting to crystallize for me. Oh no, all right, well then let's do this. Let's go to effect. Let's go over here to pixelate and let's do point, pointalize. See if pointalize does anything for us. So pointalize is gonna do the same thing. There we go. So pointalize looks good. We are going to use our object, rasterize, and then again, use that setting. So if you have used settings, check this out. So let's say we have settings in, looks great. You can save those settings by clicking right here and say save as a new preset. So use my settings, 128, 98, zero, two, ignore white, easy. Use those settings, save it as a new preset. Um, you can set it as my name, you can set it as Illustrator, you can set it as whatever you want. And the great thing is now, all we need to do is change the threshold. So if I just want it to be really light to add some spots, uh, I can change that threshold very low and it's just gonna add some little polka dots there. So I'm going to expand and maybe we want some yellow here. Let's pull this over and we didn't have it aligned, but we can kind of fake it. So I'll kind of find where the pieces are and maybe add some yellow on top. Ooh, cool. So let's bring that yellow all the way up to the top. And then let's change the blend mode to some kind of like color uh, dodge. Let's try that. Meh, oh, not crazy about it. Let's try maybe overlay. Cool. 
All right, so now we've got some cool, funky, crazy type that is interacting with all of those pieces. Uh, so play around with it, see what you can create and how you can get totally insane into the glorious 36 days of type. Uh, I do want you to join our Discord. Uh, it is discord.gg slash ACC. You can see the link right over there. And you can post in our challenge channel to get better acquainted, to get some feedback and to hang out with us. You also can post on social media using hashtag 36 days of type. So thanks for joining us. There are a ton more type challenges coming. Make sure you explore the links down in the description and I will see you again for another Illustrator Challenge. Bye.